All right, so I just went through and made this little thing. We're going to start by making the player now. I'm just gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna add in a new cube. This will be our character's hitbox. I'm gonna press N, which will bring up our scale and everything. And for the scale, I'm just gonna set everything to 0.3, and I'm going to set the Z to 0.6. And just to make everything a little bit easier to see for this part, I'm just going to hit Duplicate. This way we have a logic window. We're just gonna click on the corner, and we're going to turn this into a logic node editor. Now let's select the player, hit new, and call this player movement. All right, so now let's go over all the components for the logic nodes. So over here we have dashboard, and with the dashboard you can apply to selected, which we want to do for this. You can compile your logic to Python, set as scene logic. I'd be careful about setting as scene logic. This can crash the game, I found, quite a bit. So just be careful, I would recommend just not using it or just playing around with it on some test projects. Uh, but I usually just stay away from it. The trees applied to the cube will show you what logic is applied to which object. You can do four key movement. So this is the way that you can automatically add it, but we are going to be doing it from scratch because I believe there is a better method than what is automatically given to you here. All right, so getting into making the player movement, let's press shift A, same way as you add an object. Let's hit the search bar and just go key and we're gonna do key down. Then take this key down node and duplicate it four times. Now we're gonna add a math node. So we'll add this math node, shift D to duplicate, and we're going to connect these two with this first math node, which we will set to subtract. And we're going to subtract the first key to the other key. So we'll do W and we'll do S, so it'll be forward and backwards. And we wanna set this to key down. Then over here, we're going to do A and D key down and A and D. Set this to subtract like the other one, like so. So we'll do a vector X, Y, and Z, and this way we can combine our vectors. Now that we look at this, we want to say, okay, which one of these keys is going to be moving on the X and which one is gonna be moving on the Y? I'm gonna have the world facing this way if I press seven on the numpad. Our character is facing north currently, which is the Y axis. So I want to connect W to the Y axis. So in fact, let's just move this down here. That way it'll all line up properly. And A and D will be on the X axis. Now what we can do is add in another math node or a vector math node, and we're gonna set this to normalize. So there'll be no difference between diagonal movement and forward movement. So we're gonna add a apply movement node, and we're gonna connect the result into the vector. The object we wanna move is going to be our self, so we can just click this little person icon and that will reference the object that the script is attached to. And we'll set this from local to global. So this condition is going to be what actually triggers this movement. Anything that has a red is basically a true or false signal. So what we need is something that says, hey, when we press a key down, we need to activate the supply movement node. So we'll just type in active keyboard so if we press a key on the keyboard, this will trigger the condition and we'll be able to move our character. Make sure that your script is applied to the character, otherwise it won't work, and press P to launch the game. So you can see the game is running. We're running at 60 frames a second and whoa, look at that. <laughs> so the movement is pretty fast. So what we want to do to fix this is take this math node, duplicate it, and where it says result and vector, put it in there and we're going to multiply by 0.01. It should slow us down. There we go. So you might notice that your keys are inverted, like my A and D key. If I press A, I'm moving right, and D is moving left, so we want to fix that. So all you have to, all you have to do is switch the A to the B and the D key to the A position. And if you press, a, press play again, you'll see that your character is moving in the right direction. We are moving a little bit too slow. So I'm gonna multiply this by 0 0.03. See how that does. How's our speed there? There we go. I think it's a little bit more kosher. And you can play around with the speed to whatever fits your game. You officially have a player in your scene. <laughs> uh, but this isn't very good for one. A big thing is there's no collisions or anything. We definitely wanna fix that. Uh, first, let's get the collisions done since it's really easy. If you use Blender, then you already know, you just go to the Physics tab, and we're not gonna touch any of these Physics options. We'll see that our character's Physics type is Static, and we wanna set this to Character. 
So now that we have character, set it to actor, and set the collision bounds to box. When we run into something, oh, <laughs> there is a reason why this is happening, but you'll see we do not just phase through objects. So what you want to do is go to max slope and set this to something like uh, 35. After setting it to 35, you'll see that for the most part, you can't go through objects and everything's working properly. But with this ladder object, you can see we can still climb it, which is unintentional. It's an unintentional bug and it could cause issues later. We don't want that to happen. Click on the ladder, make sure it's selected, go to object, set origin, and we're going to set this to volume right there like that right in the center and then what we can do is set this to actor and collision box so now we can't walk through this anymore and we'll probably want to go through and do that for all of our objects so just select everything in the scene object set origin and set origin to volume it's not necessary to put collision bounds on every single object in fact I would recommend not objects that you definitely don't want the character to go through or to have weird glitchiness with just add collision bound to the main objects in the scene. So you can see that we're getting a bunch of this glitchiness and there's a bunch of weird collisions and stuff like that. And it has to, I believe it has to do with the size of the object. So let's just select everything in the scene, press S and scale it two times. The jitteriness is definitely a lot less noticeable. So if we press N, we'll be able to see our stuff. And let's just scale again two times. And you can see the dimensions. Now everything is to a 1.2 scale. You can definitely see that I move a lot slower and that jitteriness has gone away. Something weird with blender collisions, and I don't know if it's just blender or what, when you get to a very small size, everything gets really jittery. Generally for collisions, I would recommend not having anything scaled under one. So let's adjust our movement and we'll do 0.2. There we go. I think that's, that's much better. And you can see that the jitteriness has completely gone away. All right, so other physics types. So let's select the grass objects in the scene, or I'm going to select these grass objects because I don't want the character to collide with them. And I'm just gonna press Control J, join them all together, do object, set origin to center, like so. And I'm going to set this to no collision. When we press play, and we run into a bush or something, we no longer collide with those objects. Maybe later we'll do something fancy, like making it so they interact with the player a little bit. All right, so let's add a jump button. Kind of my main goal is to make it so the player can jump across these lily pads to get over to this section. I don't want the player to go in the water or swim. Once you go into the water, the player will drown. Let's add a little bit of a jump to our character. And all we have to do is say key. In fact, we can just duplicate this key here and set it to tap. We want it to use the space bar or whatever key you want to use for the jump button. So we can go to physics, character, and jump. So just connect the spacebar into the jump node and select self. So if we press play and we hit spacebar, you can see our character jumps. And we can adjust the fall speed and gravity also. In order to adjust the jump, you can either come over to the game physics tab again and under character, you will have jump force. And you can change this to something like 13. You can just adjust it until the height is right for you. Finally, we can do fall speed max. So this will be how fast the character falls. So if we set this to 75 and we press play, the acceleration, the player will go all the way up and then accelerate down. All right, so for this water, if you're using the same asset pack, we'll just select all the water and control J. Make it all one object, set origin to center of surface. Let's set it to static and we'll do actor and ghost. This will give us a little bit of collision data later. So when we play the game, if we go to the water, character will fall into the water. A little bit of an angle here so you can see it better, like so. 